So what's really interesting in the past with microbiology is that we've been mostly primarily focused on pathogens, right? So the things that cause disease or infections. And because of that, we're mostly interested then in, in killing bacteria. So giving antibiotics or using antiseptic wipes, uh, making things as clean as possible. Now we can actually have the tools to start studying what's, the hum what's called the human microbiome, which is basically all the normal bacteria that live in and on our bodies uh, and we carry around day to day. And these bacteria basically equal the same number of cells as our own body. They actually have more genes than we do. Uh, and they do really important functions. So they synthesize important vitamins. They break down basically the food that we eat day to day. And then they actually protect against pathogens that we actually don't want. We can only grow a small proportion of all the bacteria in the gut. And then for all the other things, we basically didn't know what they were doing. And what's really exciting now is that we actually have the tools available. And the reason we can do that is that we actually extract the DNA and then we use next-gen sequencing technologies, which have come out and are much cheaper than before and much more high throughput. Uh, and using those technologies, we can actually now sequence the, the genes or the genomes of these different bacteria and then come up with actual profiles of all the bacteria, say, in the gut, um, and also their list of functions as well. And so those are really important for understanding basically who's there and what they're doing in the microbiome. So in my lab, we're really focused on developing new methods to interpret this uh, next-gen sequencing data and then apply those new methods to different types of uh, diseases. So one of the really exciting projects we're involved in is looking at Crohn's disease in pediatric patients. Uh, so in that case, we can actually tell from their microbiome signature based on what taxa or different organisms are in their gut, whether they have Crohn's disease or whether they don't. And then also what's really more exciting is that we can actually predict whether they'll respond to a treatment or not and have sustained remission. And so if we can continue to develop that further, then we can actually bring that from the lab into the cl clinical side uh, and really change how healthcare is delivered uh, to these patients.